Love is not a thing one is able or not able to do based on some magic, some chemistry. That is for plays. Love is determination. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 emotional moments in Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story. From the moment I saw you trying to go over the wall, I have loved you desperately. I cannot breathe when you are not near. I love you, Charlotte. My heart calls your name. For this list, we'll be looking at the bittersweet highs and lows of this royal love story. But pray, be wary, spoilers are ahead. Which moment from Queen Charlotte had you dabbing your eyes with the corner of your latest Lady Whistledown? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Brand New The Lady Danbury we first meet in Bridgerton is so regal and self-assured that she could be mistaken for a royal herself. Queen Charlotte takes us back to when she was just Agatha, a young woman unhappily married to a much older man. And yet, when he suddenly passes away, Agatha is surprised to find herself feeling adrift. I was three when my parents promised me, when a deal was struck. Three years old, so I was raised to be his wife. She details how she was molded to be his perfect bride, never allowed to develop her own tastes or interests. As much as she resents this fact, Agatha struggles with her sudden independence. And as many times as I dreamed and imagined and hoped and planned, I never thought what it would actually be like to have him be gone. Though her true nature is apparent, she was raised to exist in a very narrow lane. With the guide rails gone, even the brilliant Agatha is uncertain how to move on. I am brand new, and I do not even know how to breathe air he does not exhale. Number 9. Wedding Night Part 2 like most brides of her era, Charlotte didn't know exactly what was supposed to happen on a wedding night, but she did suspect that hers was unusual. George, this is how it is to be. This is our marriage, you there and me here. Yes. Why? I, I thought it... It is easier. Charlotte proves difficult to deny, though, and once the couple are back in each other's presence, the attraction between them is too strong to resist. Try again. That seems very, I think that is a reasonable idea. Their first real night as husband and wife is sweet and tender, but also crackling with physical chemistry. It seems like the start of a beautiful happily ever after. Unfortunately, all that magic goes right out the window in the cold light of day. You told me to bed her. I have done so. I understand. It has been abundantly clear since my first breath that I was born for the happiness or misery of a great nation and consequently must often act contrary to my passions. Tough as Charlotte is, these revelations hurt her deeply, and it's heartbreaking watching her first intimate experience ruined for her. I shall have my breakfast now. There is no need to wait for the king. Number 8. Collateral Damage when Charlotte's only legitimate grandchild dies suddenly, she turns her matchmaking attentions on her children to ensure a new heir. Unfortunately, what she learns in the process is that she may have neglected them up until that point. You do not learn about us, you do not care for what we care for. Our happiness is not your goal. Nonsense. I want what is best for you. As your mother... You have never been a mother. In giving her life so fully to George, it seems she was unable to give her children the attention they needed from her. The strained relationships that have resulted from that are difficult enough. However, it's even harder learning how her own troubles have impacted her children, especially her daughters, who have put off finding partners of their own. You are still his queen. Forever frozen. Forever waiting. Your daughters could not leave you here, trapped in time. Charlotte's marriage to George always came with a price. Though she may have gladly paid it, she did not anticipate the deficits it would create in her family. If you understood the sacrifices, how hard I have worked to make sure you each... I have been an excellent mother. No, you have been our queen, but you have never really been our mother. 
Number seven, a pounding of a cure. Her perfection is matched only by my deformity. She belongs as far from me as she can get. Will your majesty not be returning to Buckingham House? Then? I have done as they asked. I married. Now I shall leave her alone, safe from me. Of course, we will soon come to realize how deeply George is suffering as well. Prone to recurrent episodes of manic disorientation, he lives in terror of his condition being discovered, especially by his new wife. Determined to become a worthy husband and king, George submits himself to the experimental treatments of Dr. Monroe. If you cannot govern yourself, you're not fit to govern others. Until then, I shall govern you. Do you understand me, boy? Monroe's methods are brutal, but George persists, certain it is the only way he can ever be with Charlotte. However, as the couple's relationship blooms in spite of his difficulties, George quickly discontinues the regimen. You and I, Doctor, have accomplished nothing. Anything accomplished for me has been the work of my bride. Her methods have done more for me than you and your chair ever could. While his health does seem improved, it's only a matter of time before another episode is triggered. And in his desperation, he goes straight back to Monroe, ready to suffer anything. Your Majesty. Strap me back. Number six, solitude. Solitude, my lady. Solitude, Coral. As she attempts to navigate her mourning, Agatha takes to walking her estate. What she finds is a friend in her neighbor, Lord Ledger. Well, you shall do better tomorrow. Tomorrow? I will see you here tomorrow. Same time. You will wear better shoes. We can ramble together. These rambles soon become more than just a pleasant daily diversion. What starts as companionship quickly evolves into an intense emotional connection. However, the affair proves to be short-lived, as Lord Ledger realizes that it would compromise his family life, as well as Agatha's fragile position in society. She is growing into a fine young lady. Mm. Perhaps one day she will have an unimpeachable reputation much like yours. Yes. My reputation is quite respected. A few fleeting moments afterwards reveal how deeply these two care about each other, but both have others who depend on them. Neither is free to follow their own desires, and we feel the pangs of this missed connection keenly. I wanted to thank you for your kindness after my husband passed. Lady Danby, it is your kindness for which I should be showing gratitude. Goodbye, the Lord Ledger. Number five, I will always love you. While we get swept away by the tragic love of George and Charlotte, another parallel love story unfolds more quietly. If at last they would have one another, uh, they, would, they would be together, have a marriage, grow old as one. We would serve them together. A lifetime. Yeah, a lifetime. Brimsley and Reynolds, who are head of Charlotte and George's household respectively, are already involved when we meet them. They share a number of sweet moments across the series and dream of a future together. Yet we eventually learn that Brimsley lives his life alone. Did you never marry? No, Your Majesty. Who could I ever find who would be free to spend a lifetime with me? In a flashback, we see Brimsley and Reynolds stealing a dance together, but their happiness is undercut by the fact that the song playing is the famous ballad of lost love, I Will Always Love You. And indeed, when we return to the present, it seems likely that however this love story resolved, it was not happily. Excuse me, sir. Number four, do you love me? From the start, Charlotte's marriage to George was a roller coaster ride as she tried to navigate his extreme pivots from hot to cold. Never one to beat around the bush though, finally she lays all her cards on the table and demands straight answers in return. I love you, George. I love you so much that I will do as you wish. If you do not love me, all you have to say is that you do not love me and I will go. I will go back to Buckingham House. George, who has tried to protect Charlotte by pushing her away, is overwhelmed almost to desperation. But in her refusal to back down, it is clear that Charlotte is desperate too. And the passion of her feelings finally pulls the truth out of George. I, I do not know where I am. Do you love me? You do not wish a life with me for yourself. No one wishes George! that. George! I will stand with you between the heavens and the earth. I will tell you where you are. Do you love me? I love you! These two have different styles of managing their emotions, certainly, but the feelings they have for each other outweigh everything else, and it is beautiful to see how they find courage in each other. George, 
it is you and me. We can do this together. Number three, the very best half. George, dearest, can you come out for me? I want to, but I cannot. The heavens, they cannot find me under here. In spite of his progress, the pressure of George's kingly duties comes crashing down on him and triggers a mental health episode. And when Charlotte manages to find him, he is deep in a shame spiral. I could not even read the words on the page. I'm not a king. I'm no one's king. You will do better next time. No. There is no better. There is no cure. Despite her efforts to bolster him, George accepts that his condition is chronic and that the rest of his life will be a struggle to manage it. Mired in a sense of defeat, he urges Charlotte to leave him. Half a man, half a king, half a life. If what we have is half, then we shall make it the very best half. I love you. It is enough. As young as Charlotte is, this could come off as romantic idealism, but she's already seen the worst and has clarity about what her future will likely entail. As lovely as fairy tales are, there is something much more impactful about a love built on such total acceptance. You said you were just George. That is who you are, half king, half farmer, but always just George. That is all you need to be. Number two, there is no one here but us. If he cannot even face his people, he is finished. After George's failure to address Parliament, the stakes are higher than usual for a ball in the Bridgerton universe, and things don't seem to get off to a promising start when he appears. Do I not seem quite fine? You are hurting my hand. Shot. Softer. There. No. Let us smile and wave. Charlotte is his pillar of strength, studying and reassuring him every step of the way. Her vows of love have all been moving, but here she becomes both George's public protector and his true partner. Keep your eyes on me. Do not look at them. There is no one here but us. As we watch the couple dance, we understand that the future will be difficult for them, and yet it feels like a triumphant moment. This is love in action, and the commitment on display is proof that they have what it takes to weather whatever lies ahead. You're in bed. You and me. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I am Venus. Charlotte gets her first glimpse of George's mental health struggles. It is Venus. Say hello. No. I am Venus. Right here. I am Venus. You are Venus. Yes. Edmund's birthday. We see the love and heartbreak of the Bridgerton marriage when Violet takes us down memory lane. I constructed these, oh, elaborate, wonderful hats and he would wear them the entire day. <laughs> he looked ridiculous in them. And we would laugh. Wedding advice. Charlotte shares a rare moment of vulnerability with her son before his marriage. And the life of a royal is lonely. <laughs> So you grab someone, and you hang on. You love and you love hard, because if you do not, you are lost. Encouragement and endurance. Princess Augusta isn't exactly sympathetic, but with her motivational words, we see how Agatha becomes Lady Danbury. You are not allowed to come here and sob. You may not quit. Cover your bruises and endure. Do not lose control of your fate, Agatha. George comes back for Charlotte. The love George feels for his family reaches him when nothing else can. I am Charlotte. This is our child. And we need you to be George again, or none of us are anyone. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, fancy meeting you here. Come, hide from the heavens with me. George and Charlotte's relationship begins in rom-com fashion when he convinces her not to flee from their wedding. 
And yet, on the lonely first night of their marriage, Charlotte regrets being persuaded. I should have gone over the wall. But many years and many more trials later, she is still by his side. Though George does not seem to know her at first, his memory returns as they revisit old moments from their past and share happy family news. Fancy meeting you here. Despite knowing how difficult this relationship has been for Charlotte especially, we see that the enormous love between the royal couple has never wavered. And with a final bookend, it is clear that neither one regrets one minute together. For better or worse, in sickness and in health. You did not go over the wall. No, George. I did not go over the wall. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.